Grass friendly to relationships, derivation of principles. The natural seventh house is Libra. The eleventh or the gainful house there from Libra is Leo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that which is good for a Libra is Leo. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. You will gain. So therefore, the first planet who is good for relationships is the Sun. Fantastic. First one. They say in all the in all the in all the shastras, the Sun is that one graha who benefits relationships. Okay. Surely he'll do. He will combust. He will do this. He will do that. But he will keep relationships in check. In fact, one simple statement is given in some other shastras. If Venus is close to the sun, the relationships are under control. The further away Venus is from the sun in degrees, the further away the relationships are under control. Okay. Simple, simple. The best is if Venus is properly perfect combust by the sun. <laughs> Odd, right? That's because the further he's away, the more, the higher the passion. Oh, okay. And the higher the passion, the more likely you are going to commit mistakes. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Now, so that's a Vedic principle. Balance is required. Now, the sun lords Leo and the friends to the sun are those who will help benefit all relationships. Wow. Sun's friends are moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Ketu. Okay. <laughs> This is based on my Sargika Sambandha of Priya yes. Parashwa Shastra. These are sun's friends. I'm not looking at Venus's friends. I'm looking at yes. sun's yes. friends. Because they will benefit relationships. Venus's friends may not benefit relationships. Okay? Now, and thus, sun, moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Ketu are good for relationships. Among these, Mars and Ketu being dire malefics can cause excess restriction in physical intimacy. Okay. But otherwise can ensure continued marriage. All right? Uh -huh. this, is, this is always the astrologer's dilemma. Sun, moon, Jupiter, we understand. But this Mars and Ketu can cause too much restriction, especially Mars. And if Mars has too much restriction on him, one day he'll explode. Oh. Right? Bill Clinton, Venus, Mars, and third house. Uh -huh. So one day he explodes. And what happens when he explodes, it's not, it's in the presence of other people. Okay? Yes. Ketu is a bit different though. Ketu can be quite good, but uh, unless you are ready for a spiritual relationship, it's, it's, it's not that healthy. All right? Okay. That's just Venus Ketu. If it's Venus Mars and Ketu, we have a different problem altogether. That Mars just messes up everything. Okay. Ketu at least has a is reasonable in relationships. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Very reasonable. Yes. Alone. With other planets, no, but alone he's fine with Venus. So Sun, Moon, Jupiter are the best. They are Sattvic Grahas. They are in fact the real remedies for relationships. If you have just one of these joins Venus, you have a remedy for relationships. You have a solution. You're having okay. a problem in a relationship. If just one of these aspects, Venus, joins Venus, if Venus is in their signs, you yes. begin the worship of them and they will solve all your relationship problems easily. Very, very easily. Wow. If Venus is with the sun, worship Lalita. If Venus is with moon, worship Annapurna. And if with Jupiter, worship Saraswati. And your entire relationship issues are solved. All of them, wow. promise, promise. Okay, we we astrologers look for these to solve Venus in the chart. Okay, so wow. if you're seeing if, if Venus is... don't care, just go for these three. If they are there, if they're not there, we need to do something else. Okay, so if Venus is in the signs of these also, then also that yeah. problem. Yes, okay. for example, I have Venus in Sagittarius. Oh, that is Jupiter Yoga. So I said for Jupiter Saraswati, I worship Saraswati. Okay. Ah, yes. All right. I know people who have got married who didn't weren't getting married. Venus in Cancer, they worshipped Annapurna, they got married. Wow. Yes. In their forties. <laughs> okay. okay. So these are the remedies. Now, I think I have a chart example here. Yes, 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 yes. Now, 
uh, what was happening? King Otto of Bavaria, that important guy, right? The chart I started with, right? He has that Venus joint Ketu and Mercury, right? Yes. So what is Ketu going to do? Ketu is good. Remember, we said good for yes. him. Yes. And Mercury, he's not in the good list, yes? Yes. Mercury it's because of the debility of Venus. Ah. Oh. So he is going to cause some issue in the relationship like you have to it's in lagna right venus lagna shukra lagna so you have to reject right uh -huh -huh. but but uh, the seventh from venus is what brings a relationship right okay. and that's virgo mercury loads that sign so he's yes. bringing and rejecting at the same time some weird experiments are going on in your mind about exper relationships going and going coming and going right yes in the, now that means if it's in if it's with Venus, if it's with Venus, the person has to satisfy your ego. Okay. It can even be satisfy your health. It can even be satisfy your physical situation. So what happened was he, Teresa, who was visiting him, her admirer, his admirer, the one who's courting him, mm -hmm. she was visiting him during Jupiter Dasha, Mercury Anta Dasha. Okay. So she had she came because it was seventh lord from Venus. She's showing up in your life. Seventh lord from Venus brings the partner. Okay. In the lag in the with Venus, I'm sorry, in the Shukra Lagna. Yes. So that means must satisfy his physical needs, must satisfy his ego. His physical needs at that time were that he was in asylum. Oh. So she, it's very restrictive. She has uh -huh. to be attentive of his mental of his mental health, of his physical health. Of his well-being, of his physical confinement, all these things she has to be attentive of. And that's what he's expecting from her. Okay. Oh, I'm in here. We can you can only write letters to me. They have to be read by somebody else before I receive them. Mercury. Hmm. Writing letters, right? Okay. Yes. And this is not good for his relationship life because it's Mercury. Mercury is not good for relationship life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if I did something else? Um, what if I took the houses from Venus? Let's say the person was in the Dasha of, uh, let's say Saturn, under Dasha. Just before his Jupiter Mercury, he was in Jupiter Saturn. How easy okay. is it for him during Jupiter Saturn? He said 12th house, so he has to go out of his way to find the partner. Okay? Oh. He has to fast, he has to restrict himself physically, something like that he has to do. Uh -huh. All right? Then he will, then the partner will be more accommodating of him. This is when he has to go look for the partner. All right. Okay. But let me count now. How many planets are in those good houses? Uh -huh. Second house is one of the good houses. One. Yes. Two more here. Three in the fourth, the from Venus, right? Fourth yes. is a good house. Then 11th, another one. So totally four planets. Okay. Uh -huh. The rest are not there. So four. Plus the ascendant itself, Venus ascendant. Two more. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So how oh. many is that? That's six planets. My goodness. This guy is resting on his laurels and waiting for all the girls to show up. Okay. There are only two other grahas who are left out of this fray, besides Venus himself. Oh. Okay. Let's try yeah. another chart. So this is his, the one courting him, right? So let us see. Venus is here, and what we notice is she was visiting him during Ketu's Antardasha. Okay? Okay. Now Ketu is in second, so she is expecting something now. Yes. Right. Keep in mind, she is expecting something because of what? Lagna? Huh. Because of her persona, behavior, her birth, okay. her name. Oh, okay. Now, at first glance, we'll say, oh, it's just, she's just waiting for him. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. look carefully. Ketu and Mars are both the planets which are restrictive, and they are both causing Papa Kartri Yoga on Venus. Oh, okay. So, because of this, when she does show up, she, and she is expecting some reciprocacy, there is high level of restriction. You cannot touch him. You cannot be in the same room. We have to be careful about your safety. All right, you can only write letters. These things are the, the restriction is very high. 
You notice that? Yes. Very high restriction. So it's like policing, high security. When Mars and Ketu both join, high security. Okay. Yes. yes. There we go. Guess what? It, 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 it was Ketu and Tadasha, right? Uh-huh. Ketu knows the 12th from Venus. So she's yes. finding the partner, right? Okay. The cool. same Tadasha where she finds the partner, she's under heavy restriction. But mm. she's expecting more openness because of her persona, name, and behavior. <laughs> so an entire prediction can be made based on that. I think that was the last of it. Let me see. Yes, concluding remarks. So by knowing all this, we can now read Venus and see an overview of the events people experience in relationships. We also know what's the difference between using the 7,007 Lord from this. But we have to start asking, if we know so much just from Venus, what is the real use of 7th house, 7th Lord, Navamsha, Upapada, etc.? Because we got to know so much just from Venus, right? Yes. So much information. So herein, my point has been that in Jyotish, nothing is left for, for no use. Okay. okay. But we have to start learning how to differentiate between each of these principles to know how to examine them in charts. It is not uh, enough just to say, oh, to see marriage, just see seventh house, seventh lord, Venus, Navamsha, Upapada, and weigh <laughs> the factors. Uh, Some people do that. They literally look at all that and then they weigh the factors. But you're not differentiating between them. Right? Okay. So we need to learn each and every step. What is the difference between Navamsha and Rashi chart? For example, okay. Navamsha, the seventh house in Navamsha is the actual spouse. You still didn't okay. actually talk to the spouse in the Rashi chart. They are meeting you, okay. but when they're not around you, where are they? They're in the Navamsha. Oh. Rashi is only when you're physically in their presence. When you're not oh. in their presence, then what? <laughs> okay. That's Navamsha. Okay. What is Upapada? Why do we need Upapada if we have seven doubts? Because Upapada tells us about the actual, uh, what we call institution of marriage. Mm -hmm. Seven doubts is the person. What about, how did marriage become part of that person? These people oh, will say, okay. why do we have the institution of marriage to begin with? It's a contract, some people say, you know, it's a formal agreement. But the two people are still two physical bodies. What made them yeah. different? Why are they different after marriage? That Upapada okay. is telling us that entire story about the formal institution of marriage, the agreement of marriage. Okay. okay. So all of these are different facets of the marriage. Seventh house is you, seventh lord, it, that means your attitude. Seventh lord is the partner and their health, their body, when your presence, how do you experience their presence? Okay, Navamsha is them independently, their lives independent of yours. Each of the Vargas are different people, guests into your life, and they are independent of you in the divisional charts. Yes. And then finally, I, have to, I had to add this, which dasha to examine? You should use that dasha which maps into the mind the best. The Vimshotri dasha maps very well into the mind. Very okay. well. That's why people use it and I've also used it today. Um, what you should consider is that there are variations of the Vimshotri dasha, like calculating it, you can calculate it from the moon, but you can also calculate it from the fourth star from the moon, or fifth star from the moon, or eighth star from the moon, as per Jataka Parijata, you have these additional three options, all right? And that is because maybe your mind does not respond as well to society as other people's do. Maybe your moon okay. is so placed that you respond differently. Then you need to use a dash which responds better to you, okay? Okay. Yes. So with that, those are my concluding remarks. I'm also opening up for some research by talking about Jaya Bhava. And uh, uh, admittedly, the comments that I made on Jaya Baba are my own. Everything mm -hmm. else I have spoken of in, this, uh, in these slides and presentation that I've given is all that I have been taught, tradition. It's none of my own views, all right? And uh, with that said, I hope that this has been an informative webinar. I think this was a... I'd like to add <laughs> at this stage, Babajit. I think this was the best session on astrology I had from since the time I was born. 
<laughs> well, I hope it. I hope it was a good session. Mm, uh, so I'm sure you'll get many more in the future, which will be two excellent. hour forty five minutes. My goodness, it was like <laughs> every slide and the examples that you had shown. It was like mind blowing, bang on to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear. The problem is sometimes we you learn something and it's not accurate, right? So I'm glad that this is justifying the the principle. Yeah, and one last question I wanted to ask you on ah. those regards is uh, yeah. because we did not put much emphasis on this. Like in Germany, we have the Dara Karak. I didn't I didn't emphasize it in this uh, lecture. Or this webinar? Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to ask that uh, regarding you said all this Navamsa seventh house is the spouse without you and all those things you said. So uh, and then you said about seventh house and Venus house it different. So how would you give? Uh, how would you define the Dara Karaka against Venus and like and seventh house? Dara Karaka is pivotal in um, because it's a part of ourself which is um, think of it this way. We, have, you, have you seen that when we speak about Kundalini and whatnot, they talk about chakras? Okay. Right? These chakras are supposed to look like lotuses, right? Yes. Yes. Now, the, they say the basic inner lotus is always eight petals. Okay. Those eight petals are the eight parts of the soul. All right? Okay. And they, they are carrying the experiences of events that happen in past lives. Memories. Uh -huh. Memories. So these Chara Karaka, including Dara Karaka, is a memory of what happened in a past life. Dara Karaka, particularly in relationships. So if you have a very nice Dara Karaka, like Jupiter, that means you have a memory of good things that happened in the last life in relationships. Oh. Where if it's a negative one, like Mars, Saturn, or Rahul, you experience dire events in your past life in relationships. The memory of bad events is there in the past life. Oh, and now that can that what happens is that it, in, in this life, we don't have the actual memory of it, but we have some type of assumption of what happened. Okay. And that assumption of what happened is embedded in the Charakaraka. Okay? okay. And it becomes a reflex or a reaction that we have towards relationships. All right. Oh. Now, so when you examine this Dara Karaka, you have you what you're doing is you're examining to what extent is your soul, you know, a, a, a gelling or happy with a relationship. Okay. Okay. And that is because of a predefined filter which came from the last life, not this life, but last life, because of okay. experiences you had in the last life. Now, when we examine the Dara Karaka. I take that very much into account. Okay. Is it then pivot, uh, pivotal in other ways? Well, it, it's also going to define my relationship with wealth. Oh. Not just relationships with people, but relationships with wealth, for example. Dara Kark is very important for that. Uh -huh. uh, so so I, we take it very seriously. And there are charts where in which the Dara Karka can be what we call thrown out of the chart. When that happens, then your soul is not looking for relations at all. These are rare people. Okay. Yeah. That, that's when the soul is developed to such a, a stage where they are starting to ignore wealth. Ah. Oh. And also relationships. All right? Okay. Um, uh, it would be appropriate to say that Dara Karka is the most important planet for being stable in this planet. Happy. Okay. We define okay. our happiness based on material prosperity and emotional happiness. Okay? Yes. Dara Karka is responsible for both. When it's ignored completely, we get people who are ignoring both. Monks, nuns. Um, oh. Yeah. It could also be blocked. Then you don't get them. So there's a way to examine them in the chart. But it's a very different analysis. It's something that I am going to be speaking of uh, when I go to Leeds in October. I'm going to be teaching okay. exactly or lecturing on that exactly. Yes, so that's why it's not in this this presentation. <laughs> okay, okay, yes. fantastic, mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the soul. To really uh, appreciate this, you have to read the Shiva Puran and read about the eight parts of the soul, the eight bondages of the soul. They are like chains, and okay. uh, they really the reason they are chains is really because they indicate a memory, and and uh, this memory is just 
a portion, that small piece of memory, which is from that huge memory database, which is called Shiva. Okay. And if you okay. want to repair your relationship with any part of your life, you should worship Shiva because you're repairing the memory which was there. You have a small piece of memory, small, small piece. Yes. Right? That small piece of memory is from the huge memory database, which is called Jyotilinga or Shiva. Oh, okay. Huge memory database. And they're called also the eight parts of the soul because Shiva is the perfection of the soul. They're only parts. They're not complete. Oh. And you okay. need to go and, and you have to one day unite that memory with the memory of the Supreme God. Okay? Wow. <laughs> the one who has, holds all the memory. He's holding every part of knowledge, Shiva. All the memories. And when you are perfect like Shiva, then you will go to your Ishta, which is Vishnu. Wow. <laughs> This is all symbolic, of course. Different religions have different names for this. Even within Hinduism, the concept of Ishta is, is very personal, right? But the one who is supposed to represent giving moksha, the one who yeah. takes that role, who takes yes. it actually, is supposed to be Vishnu with the Sudarshan Chakra. But you may ask Hanuman for that. You may ask, you may ask Shiva for that. You may ask Shakti for that. And they will then implore Shiva, uh, Vishnu to throw the chakra. Okay. Yes. Fantastic it is. My God. I think whoever has watched this once, they have to watch it ten times. <laughs> well, then, then we then we can have one webinar every six months, right? <laughs> yes. I don't know about others, but I have to watch this entire thing minimum three, four, five times so that I can I'm, understand. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that you liked it. Yes, fantastic it was. And Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It my was my great pleasure. Career. Wishing you all the best in your future yes. pursuits and looking forward to us speaking again in the future. All the yes. Best. And Absolutely. whoever wants any consultation uh -huh. from you, they can always go to your website, shrigaruda.com. I'll pin it in the description. Um, some will be interested in studying astrology, uh, oh, yes. of which I have a website, uh, rama-edu.com, where mm -hmm. there's very nice courses on mm -hmm. astrology, uh, very cheaply priced at this stage, uh, which you can go through. Uh, I, I developed four years of, uh, or rather four large courses at, uh, at beginners, uh, intermediate and advanced levels for people uh -huh. who want to get the, some really solid insight into astrology on that website that I just mentioned, rama-edu.com. Okay. That's for everybody. Anybody can do that. Besides that, my website, srigaruda.com, has many free recordings you can just okay. google, google or go through the search find a recording and listen to it if some recording links are missing email me i'll repair them you know it's it's been there for some time um so uh, for those who want to study those are the options of course you mentioned my website for for readings yes fantastic so much service you have done to humanity <laughs> well if if i can teach it means i've learned it right Yes, yes. So it's so part of it is also selfish that I can also be able to <laughs> understand it myself. Yes. Thank you very much. We'll hope I hope we'll get get back soon again in the near future for some other fantastic topic like this, like Venus, maybe this time spirituality or Jupiter or something like that. That would be lovely. That would be yes. lovely. But it's not so popular in all Babaji. Jupiter is in Libra right now, so I can only talk about relationships until he enters Scorpio. Oh, okay. Right? You must follow what the transits are showing. Otherwise, how do you know what people want to learn? Okay. Right? Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Babajit, have yeah. a nice day. All the yes. best. Namaskar. Bye for now.